So you walk into your favorite tech store and you're getting a new monitor and it has G-Sync or FreeSync. How awesome is that? But you have absolutely no idea what that means because let's be honest, if these companies spent a fraction of the time actually explaining what they're selling, you wouldn't have to watch this video. But nonetheless, fret not because in a simplified manner, I'm gonna tell you exactly what G-Sync and FreeSync are and the general concept of adaptive sync and why it's so helpful and important, especially if you're gaming or just watching fast motion action in general. Nonetheless, let's not waste time on ceremony here and get right into it. Before I can explain what G-Sync and FreeSync are, we have to get to the reason they exist in the first place. And the core cause is simply something called screen tearing. If you've ever played a game and you've noticed this odd line pop up or, or there's like jittering or stuttering going on while you're playing, there's a reason for that. And the aspect basically is that your monitor has a built-in refresh rate that's native to it. And your computer, well, more specifically your graphics card, also renders frame rates that are independent of your monitor. And in a traditional setting, these two devices don't talk with each other. So for example, let's assume we have a basic monitor with a refresh rate of 60 Hertz, which basically means it can produce up to 60 frames in any given second. And then we have our graphics card for a given game, which can produce a certain amount of FPS as well. Again, frames per second. Now, the thing is in an ideal world, both the graphic card and the monitor would be producing exactly 60 frames per second, in which case screen tearing would never occur because everything is in synchronization. And so there wouldn't be any sort of inconsistencies. However, in the real world, things aren't so simple because, well, more often than not, your graphics card is either producing less or more frames than the native refresh rate of your monitor. So for example, again, if your monitor has a 60 Hertz refresh rate, let's say your GPU is producing 59 frames per second versus the 60 that your monitor is used to seeing. Now your monitor was born knowing only one thing, how to produce 60 frames per second. That's all it's ever known. And suddenly it now has 59 frames being tossed at it from the computer. It has no idea what to do, so it panics. And to overcompensate for what it does is the first 58 frames of the second, it actually plays perfectly. However, the 59th frame, since there's no 60th frame, it actually repeats twice. So literally you see the last frame for twice the amount you should actually see it. The result is that you kind of get this lag or stutter on your screen where an image kind of appears still for longer than it should. And it's an inconsistent experience. Now, when you have just one frame missing, you're talking like 16 milliseconds, you wouldn't even notice it. However, if the difference gets more dramatic, for example, let's say you're getting 40 frames per second from your GPU and your monitor expects 60, it now has to overcompensate 20 times. So it will take the 39th frame and repeat it another 20 times, which basically means you're looking at a still image for a very long time or relatively long time. And this happens frequently enough that it becomes a very nuanced kind of experience. It's not fun. There's a lot of almost like stuttering and jittering going on real time and screen tearing as a result. Now, technically speaking, the opposite can also be a problem though to a much lesser extent where your GPU throws more frames than what your monitor is capable of handling. So let's say your GPU throws 80 frames and your monitor does 60. Now in this case, that's not such a big problem because well, your monitor has more frames that it needs to work with. Still here, I'm so happy to see that. If you guys are enjoying the content, please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. Not only does it help me grow, it helps kind of like pretty much set the foundation of the future of this channel because it is after all my bread and butter and you supporting it by subscribing means the world to me. Let's continue. Okay, so if both these devices have different frame rates or refresh rates, how the heck do we fix the problem? An old school solution that's existed for some time now is vertical synchronization, more commonly known as V-Sync. Basically, V-Sync artificially limits the frame rates your GPU produces to match that of your external monitor. So if your monitor again has a 60 Hertz refresh rate, then your GPU will produce 60 frames that it will then send over to your monitor. This does effectively end screen tearing and all the stuttering because now everything is in sync again. But the problem with this solution is something called input lag. And while it's not always as dramatic of an issue, it does exist. Basically, let's say you press a button or you're using 
using your controller or the keyboard, you might notice a very minute delay between you pressing that command and it actually visually appearing on your monitor. Why is that? Because even though your GPU is restricting the frame rates, it still needs those extra frames to truly represent that action. And it can't do that anymore because it has to artificially limit what it can produce to match up with your monitor. And then you have a problem on your hand. And if you're in a really competitive game, like a first person shooter, you might actually find this to be troublesome, especially when every second counts. Then one day back in like 2014 or something, the monitor went to therapy where it was told it needs to learn to communicate better with the computer so they can be in sync. And so the engineers got an idea. What if they implemented a technology within modern monitors where rather than having a static refresh rate, it has a adaptive refresh rate or a variable refresh rate. So it has a range between let's say 75 Hertz and 40 Hertz. So it can display as little as 40 frames per second or as many as 75 frames per second. The great benefit here is that the GPU no longer has to restrict itself or be worried that it's not producing enough frame for the monitor to keep up. So for example, if the GPU is producing 45 frames per second, the monitor could now variably bring down its refresh rate to 45 Hertz, perfectly matching. And if the GPU starts producing 70 frames per second, as long as within the range of the monitor, it can go all the way up to 70 Hertz as well, thereby producing 70 frames per second. The end result, goodbye screen tearing. And also unlike VSync, you don't get a lot of input lag if any at all. And now we come to the two big players in the modern day adaptive sync world. NVIDIA's G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync. In the past, the two had their fair share of differences, but in 2024, they are neck and neck in terms of overall quality and performance, and also the output that they actually deliver to the extent that you can't go wrong with either really. In the past, NVIDIA's G-Sync exclusively used to work with just NVIDIA graphic cards, so the RTX series and the GTX series, but modern day G-Sync monitors are completely or at least almost completely compatible with most AMD cards as long as the monitor supports it. However, FreeSync has always been open to the idea of complete compatibility from day one and offers full compatibility across AMD as well as Nvidia graphic cards. So again, the differences have become very slim between the two and it's a pretty similar experience. Now you'll quickly realize that AMD and Nvidia actually have multiple tiers for their adaptive sync technologies cause capitalism. But seriously, with AMD, you have the AMD FreeSync version, then you have FreeSync Premium, and then you have Premium Pro. With G-Sync, same situation, you have G-Sync Compatible, then G-Sync, and then G-Sync Ultimate. Now, I'm not gonna cover all the differences. I will leave links in the video description below so you have a chart to see what each one offers. However, with the top tier stuff like G-Sync Ultimate, which obviously is gonna be on the most expensive monitors out there, you have certain guarantees like color testing, certain standards, and you know, for example, monitors offering HDR with 1000 nits of peak brightness guaranteed. And then with AMD Premium Pro again, or FreeSync Premium Pro, sorry, same situation, you'll have a guaranteed refresh rate of at least 120 Hertz at 4K or higher resolution, and a number of other standards that have to be met for the respective tiers. Hopefully you guys have a much better understanding of what adaptive sync is and why it's so necessary especially in the gaming world. But again, a quick recap, screen tearing basically occurs when you have a inconsistent frame rate between what your computer is producing and what your monitor is capable of. And screen tearing produces effects like stuttering, jittering, and just half split frames on an image, none of which are of course pleasant to look at. And technologies like V-Sync, G-Sync, and of course, FreeSync can help alleviate or entirely eliminate those issues. If you want to learn more about these concepts or want a more in-depth guide, I'm happy to make it depending on demand for this video. If you have any other questions, please ask in the comments. I can't promise I'll get to your question, but I will definitely try. There's just always a lot of comments. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing, liking this video. It genuinely helps me grow. Catch you in the next one.